Hello and welcome to task 2. In this video we'll be looking at image sequences and interactions. Image, with image sequences we can do quite a lot of fantastical stuff. So if we wanted to have a material that changes over time or changes depending on an interaction, we would want to create an image sequence. Now an image sequence is similar to how uh, traditional animation works. You'd have a series of frames and once those frames are played at a certain rate, it would give the illusion of movement. In this case, though, we just want to store a collection of textures and have the face mesh change to represent these different frames or textures based on an interaction that we as a user enforce. So in the your phone, in our week one folder, you'll notice that we have a task two folder, which has an image sequence in. So I've already created four basic face mesh templates and you'll notice that I've named each of these in a sequential naming convention. So mat01, mat02, mat03 and mat04. This could be image 1, 2, 3 and 4 as long as the numbers are sequential and the naming convention and the names stay spelt the same. It, if one of these was a capital M this would not necessarily be sequential therefore it wouldn't work. So we need to make sure that these are all, all correctly named first before proceeding. Okay, so now we have that all done, we can now go to our asset panel and we're going to want to add an animation sequence to our project, like so. So this animation sequence is our controller, so by default whatever animation or sprite sheet we bring into here would be on loop. Our frame rate is obvious the frame rate that the video would play back at or the frames would play. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to create a texture animation sequence for this. So you saw those four frames I've shown you just a moment ago. If I go to texture and I go to choose file and I navigate to where my four in this case image sequences are, I'm going to select all four of these frames and hit open, making sure that all frames I want to be as part of my sequence are selected at this stage because it is a lot harder later to come back and change this. Click open, like so. And now we will notice that under textures we have this little material called mat underscore zero open square bracket one to four close square bracket. So this contains all four of those images in a sequential order. And I make sure that is on mat 0 to 1, 4, which it is. And I now go back over to my material, which I've already applied in stage 1 to our face mesh. I can change my texture to now be my animation sequence. And as you'll see, it's now just going to infinitely loop through those four frames. If I was to change my frame rate, so let's say 1, it would change my frame every one second, essentially. I could turn off a loop so it would only go through once, and once it gets to the last frame, it would stop. But what I actually want to do is I actually want to be able to control these frames and change the texture based on either a facial gesture or a screen tap gesture. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my animation sequence and I'm going to click on this little arrow button next to current frame. This will bring up my patch editor. And you can see this is the represents the current frame, which is zero or our first frame. And what I want to do is I want to link in our interaction controls to this point here, our trigger. So I'm going to simply right click in the patch editor. And this will give us a variety of patch options. Under interaction, I'm going to select our interaction method. So in this case, we're going to go with a screen tap. And I'm just going to hit insert. So I now need to, every time my screen is tapped, I want this to now perform an action to then control this. So I'm going to drag from my tap handle, so I get this little grey line like so, and once I release it, the patch editor window will open up again. And this time I want to add a counter, so every time I tap my screen, I want it to count how many times I've tapped it, and change the image based on that count. So I go to Utility, I go to Counter, I insert my counter like so, so every time my screen is tapped it's going to increase by one 
I want to change my maximum count to the number of frames in my sequence. So if I created my an image sequence in something like After Effects and I had 120 frames, I'd change this to 120 frames, for example. And I'm just going to link my count up to my current frame, like so. And as you see, nothing seems to have changed. But if I now go to my preview window, click on the little hamburger menu up here and change the option from Simulate Orbit to Simulate Touch, every time I tap the screen, it will now change between one of those four frames indefinitely. If I wanted this to have a different interaction, I could link it up to every time the mouth opens, it changes. So to do that, I'm just going to quickly show you. So to do that, I'm going to have to add in a facial control. Don't worry about this, we'll be looking at this in task three. And I'm just going to say every time the mouth is open, I want this to change the frame and it will automatically add in our pulse for us. So now every time that her, she opens her mouth, it will progress to the next frame. Simple. And with that, we're going to uh, just quickly revert this back to a screen tap. Like so, and we're going to now progress to our third and final task for this week. So I'm just going to file save this. And now we can progress to the final task which it will be how to track our eyes and change our pupils. Thank you for watching.